for 700 megahertz, it's 497 microwatts per centimeter squared. Um, and the reason there are, the exposure limits are higher for above gigahertz is because studies have shown that absorption to human beings, including children, is far less, absorption of radio frequency energy is far less at those higher frequencies because of the shorter wavelength. Uh, and that's, and for that reason, that's for the lower frequencies, they, the, the, uh, the exposure limits are more, are, Ex are lower. Except that the cell tower is not only going to be emitting just the, those frequencies, they are also going to be emitting a variety of frequencies. And the other thing I'd add is at this conference in Israel, we actually were talking about submillimeter and millimeter uh, frequencies, which only penetrate about four pieces of paper into the body, like you said, much less the higher you go, but that they uh, prefer the sweat gland and the sweat glands become helical antennas. This research is going to be presented at the BEMS, the bioelectromagnetic meeting, which is happening in China like next week, I guess. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that it's not harmful just because it penetrates less. In fact, um, this, this effect, we had a top physicist who was presenting this research um, saying, look, we have got to take a look at this before we say this is safe because even though it doesn't penetrate as deeply, it's impacting our sweat glands in a unique way and there is definitely a biological impact. But that tower is going to be emitting all kinds of frequencies or is it only going to be emitting well, that one little frequency? No, it's not. It's, okay. it's so it will be emitting all the absolutely, other frequencies. Absolutely. But you, what I'm saying is you're you. quoting the worst you know, upper limit. But that's yeah. because the majority of our technology has been using that until you're moving into the higher ones. So I could show you a comparison of the other ones too. Do you need to uh, move to the Yeah, we are running out of time. So I'm going to um, <coughs> quickly cover a little different direction of questions. And I, I did see hints. Every question that's been asked in some way or another, other than I, so far. I had a location question, but I don't feel very satisfied. I, it wasn't really one of us thing, but can somebody just exhibit A1, describe all those, like, my question was, <coughs> where, are, where is the maintenance crew coming in and with this current, like, how, if somebody could just describe what this is all about. Yeah, that's good. A little bit more specifically, yeah. Like, where are the kids gonna be playground-wise? And so I'm sorry, yeah, I just, a bit more detail. As far as the uh, the technicians that will access the site, um, it would uh, it's, it's through this this, this road to the uh, the parking lot. That's the entrance. So that's Can you point the entrance to yeah, the parking the entrance. lot so she can see what you're talking about. Right here. So that's Neilsville Church Road. Yeah, exactly. This is Neilsville Church Road. Yeah, exactly. She has the same she slide in her PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that would just be easier. Yeah, Are you able to load that up? Yeah. Yeah. Smaller. I'm sorry. So, I thought it was going to be. That's okay. That's so my this number. right here oh, yeah. is that's another, another firm. Okay. That's another firm. I apologize. It's a, it looks accurate to you, though, right? I mean, it's probably no, it's, no, it's not. Oh, sorry. It was no. with them. Yeah. Oh, what's the difference? <laughs> is it different? What's the difference? Well, this is the one that we're using. So this is what's that's the difference. Yeah, but is there a difference? So this one was submitted. That's an older version, yeah. As long as we can tell what I think she's saying from where we are, we can't tell where the entrance that's what right, right. that is. Yeah, so, so, we just we just yeah, so the entrance, the entrance okay. to the parking lot is right here. Okay. And, uh, and this is the school mm -hmm. uh, parking lot over here. Um, tennis courts. Mm -hmm. This is the building I think that. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. um, yeah. And then we have the uh, over here we have the uh, fields, open area, mm -hmm. and behind the school here we have the dumpsters, these two rectangles, and then the, uh, the compound. And then there's a dock here too, the building services, and then there's a line of trees here. So you would definitely still go in the parking lot and use, you're not building another road. No, 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 they use existing uh, building services. But driveway, I guess, is there, there's an entrance for, for the building services yes. back there? Okay. Once the site is installed, and this, this is just a, a factual answer to your question, mm -hmm. um, these sites are monitored remotely and there's maybe, uh, what is it about? Four visits a year. Now. Four visits, yep, every couple per months. Per carrier. Okay, so it's it's unmanned. There's nobody that's there every day. So there's a few annual visits just to for maintenance. Right. So it's, I just 
don't want you to have the impression that there's somebody coming there every day or every week. It's pretty infrequent. Except in the summer, they have to mow and get down weeds and stuff. <coughs> The compound is going to have it's, it's a gravel compound. It's, a gravel. Before, it's also um, we saw a picture up there of a, a school site that had the mm -hmm. chain link fence mm -hmm. and everything was very visible. This Behind is, it's had um, a lot of growth in it. This and is a lot of board growth. on board fence. Yeah, there's, a, there's board on board so. fence here that's going to be 100. percent um, And so, do those employees of Verizon or whomever's coming have to be vested as much as the volunteer parents that come into the school? Oh, yeah. Do they, they have to go through in. the whole? New MCPS policy of yeah, that's it's all stated in the lease. The, the Mar Maryland Child Protection Office that, that language is. Uh, could could I ask a quick question? Yeah. How often per carrier, if it's just Verizon, let's say it's a couple carriers, does each carrier come four times? About you said each about each carrier four. handles their own maintenance. Uh, I'm I'm I mean I I'm speaking for Verizon Wireless, yeah. but I don't know why it would be substantially more. I can't tell you that. It'd be but about I think four it times. would be. These sites are maintained remotely. Um, the technicians don't have a need to come to the sites as much as they used to years back. They can they can do everything they need from a remote location. Right, but you said about four times a year, and that's just for Verizon, right? Yeah. Okay. So if there's a couple more carriers, that would be make more like an like an apartment building. There'd be more folk, more companies on the tower, and then they would be doing their maintenance. Well, the most too. there could be beyond. Uh, I shouldn't say the most. It's required that there be. Space available for three carriers. Three. So Verizon Wireless and two others. The reality is, once you get to a certain level on a pole, carriers aren't going to want to go below that. So, but can't you add 20 be, feet without? You can add 20 well, uh, feet, right? We can't just one day decide we're going to add 20 no. feet. There's a process for that as well. But the, I'm just the, answering your basic question, which is, I can tell you what Verizon Wireless does. I think Rich has indicated for other carriers it's probably about the same, but I don't speak for other carriers. Mm -hmm. You can ask other carriers. I just know you can go 20 feet with a very simple process well, today's by law. Today's proposal is a 150 foot right. tower. But it can go up to 170. 170. Yeah, the 12 right. sites we have, we haven't had anybody extend, <coughs> and extend a pole. Right. And 150 mm -hmm. feet is below mm -hmm. the allowable. A lot of people were asking questions to try to understand where it is. Mm -hmm. um, since I'm familiar with this, I coach baseball mm -hmm. here on that field for I don't know how many years. Um, so if, if you drive around the building and there's a place where you start to hit gravel and then um, uh, grass and so forth, or where it used to be grass but people put the park on it, <laughs> uh, you'll be looking at the, the baseball field. To the right of that, which is our building, You'll see the loading dock, and you'll see the two sets of brown doors that are right there. This is, right here is where the baseball teams park. Mm. Um, and this is the t-ball field. These are the softball and baseball fields. These are, these are the t-ball fields over here. Knowing the landscape of that as well as I do, this is probably the person to give an opinion. From a measurement perspective, if you've got a 150 foot pole and it breaks off at 75 feet as it's supposed to, it's still going to hit the building. Okay. I just want to clarify too that the pole is not going to break off. I mean, I'm a structural engineer by trade. I've analyzed these many, many times. I've analyzed thousands of these poles. And I know that you know failure is defined as is the material deforming more than the limits set forth. So um, the pole is not going to collapse. It, it, it's meant to have, when I say an inherent weak point, at the midpoint or above the top of the pole or above the midpoint of the pole, um, the pole is just going to excessively deflect and stay in that position. That's considered a failure. It's not considered a, a, a full collapse or a partial collapse of any kind. So I just want to make that clear. But can I add something that I didn't talk about this in my PowerPoint, but the Department of Labor and OSHA have written about not necessarily the poles falling down, but the fact that things fall off the tower that things do fall and hit the workers down below. In fact, there have been so many deaths that they wrote a letter saying we need to do more in terms of safety, especially for the, the guys working on the tower. Um, and you can read about that. So things do fall off the tower as well. You know, they, there's all these parts that are up there and things certainly can fall. And while you're working on it, things possibly could fall. You could drop something or 
uh, a tool that you're working on, but you can read about the Department of Labor. In fact, there was a PBS piece all about this, this cell tower safety issue mm -hmm. as well with a lot of concerns raised. Tom, I have one more question, and it's more of a macro Do you get applications from other retailers or vendors? I'm curious about the process of mm -hmm. leasing out the property that is owned by the Board of Ed. So for example, if um, my gym came to you and said mm -hmm. we wanted to open up a my gym on our property, on your property, would you entertain that application? No. And why no. is it that you have these relationships yeah. with so cell so towers, uh, well, carriers, it's, it's, it's Telecommunications are essentially like a utility. Um, the other aspect of it, too, is uh, they don't take, when you look at the size of the school sites, they don't take much land. And for um, NCPS, it's um, a passive revenue source, to be honest with you. We, we give this section of land, and the Verizons and T Mobile, they come in and manage it. We don't have to provide, like, for example, we have some closed school sites where we, uh, we lease to private schools. Um, and we provide uh, building services for them as part of this lease. So yeah, that's, you know, that's more of an intensive, um, and that's the other aspect of what we lease are our closed school sites for. I can see the path of revenue being attractive. I wonder if you have, in your department, looked at alternatives to passive revenue sources that don't cause this agitation and concern. Yeah, I don't think they would school board or board of education want to get into a you know, retail type operation or things like that. Why not? You know, just Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah, <laughs> my question is very simple. And I, you know, I, what I'm trying to understand is that's a Verizon store right off the road here. And I've been in there before. They got very strong signal. Um, it's daily right down here, less than a mile. And I really recall mm -hmm. from your presentation that you were saying something about overlapping signal, uh, something of that nature. Preferably, you don't want overlapping si signal. Daily, this less than a mile from here. I'm not sure if you have a Verizon antenna. It's a T-Mobile. It's a T-Mobile antenna. How come you can't put your thing on your bus? Right. You okay. have two co-locations. I think they looked at that site. Okay. It's suitable. It's an open, and it's been there a while. So, so now, Space constraints too. We, we, it, it does a Verizon antenna built on this site. Um, you, first of all, the first question is, what is that store using for their signal? How are they getting their signal and how are they operate? Second of all, if the antenna pole was to go up, uh, how sure we are, how sure can we be that there will not be another competing uh, entity, uh, another cell you know, company that wants to put you know, in a tent and maybe six feet down the road? Uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, 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 how sure are we that we're not going to be you know, outcrowded you know well, that's that. where the, the, regu the regulatory process of the county, uh, if this poll goes in and let's say AT&T or T-Mobile comes in and says, hey, we need another site, they'll be required to go here before they go anywhere else because the county will say, well, you, you've got a co-locate opportunity here. So the county investigates all that in their review process. So how does it affect uh, Bailey? Because Bailey is less than a mile away. Yeah, and that's strictly T-Mobile. And I think what T-Mobile did there, too, is they added another... They're the only ones on that pole, and they've added another level of antenna. But, but you're just saying that, that when you put this antenna up, part of that T-Mobile could come in. Yeah, well, uh, or some other, you know, you know. Yeah, and we're getting down. There's not as many carriers anymore. There's consolidation in the industry. Well, it sounds like because you're even looking at the site, even though daily is only less than a mile away, it right. already fits that. That description. That, so um, why is this site so important? Right. I mean. You're saying daily. The, there's a there's a tower at daily. It's mm -hmm. not Verizon, but it's T-Mobile. No, it's only but 90 feet high. Why is this one going to be 150? Yeah. I guess it 
Mais Code, Code, Brighton, Code. 